What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be analyzing the match between Manchester City and Arsenal in the English Premier League. Manchester City ended up winning the match two goals to one against a good performance from Arsenal. But before we get into the tactics behind the match, check out both my books. They're online on Amazon and there's links in the description below. And be sure to check out Keyframe. It's how I made this video and there's a link to that in the description as well. But let's get right into the video. So Manchester City did some different things in their buildup with their two central defenders and this caused asymmetry. So they had both Laporte and Ruben Diaz go to one side of the field which was the right side which allowed Ederson to then occupy the left side with Nathan Ake. And with this asymmetry it off saw free man for Manchester City on this right hand side due to numerical superiority. So how it affected the Arsenal 4-2-3-1 press is Saka now had more decisions to make on who he would press because of the change in reference points among the central defenders. And then if Lacazette also didn't adjust his positioning, Martinelli would be left with an extra player to go and press and Cancelo would then be free to invert and get on the ball and create superiority. So as we see here, the man-for-man -man matchup with the press being initiated and Rodri being marked by Martin Odengard. We see Nathan Ake then become a potential free player and then Cancelo off our screen on the right-hand side, potentially inverting to then take advantage of space and the numerical advantage they have through this asymmetric right-hand shift of their back line, causing the numerical advantage through their right side of buildup. The Arsenal in their high block, they went with a 4-2-3-1 with Lacazette at the top of this press. And what this did, it gave them more horizontal lines to then impact Chelsea on multiple lines of play. And having more lines of pressure, it allowed them to stagger their lines and control the Man Manchester City buildup a little bit better. And when Manchester City goes with a single pivot, the lone attacking midfielder Martin Odengard covers this quite well. Moving into the midfield third, first for Arsenal, we have the asymmetry from Arsenal's front line, which sees Lacazette, Odengard, and Saka all jumping to almost create a 4-3-3 shape rather than a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-4-2. So what this was down to was because of Nathan Ake's very deep positioning on this left-hand side, playing more as a left central defender, with a lot of times him er inverting towards the half space, caused Saka to then jump to the first line of pressure to allow him to more adequately press Ake. This then left Onegaard a bit deeper because of Cancelo's versatility and his ability to go higher, but also invert left Martinelli deeper and more inside connected with the midfield three to then control this makeshift double pivot or the fluidity from Cancelo. Manchester City were much more creative in their buildup with Ederson coming higher to then help break down the mid block from Arsenal. So Ederson joining the central defenders and becoming almost like a third central defender on this right hand side who would also often shift to the left hand side and switch with Laporte. But in this picture he's on the right hand side with Ruben Diaz then occupying the wider areas. This gave more freedom to players like Cancelo to invert and go higher between the lines and left Rodri with more passing options to secure circulation or exploit Arsenal when their front line would go and press to allow Rodri to become free. So this was a very clever solution and made it easier for Manchester City to create numerical advantages and find free players between the lines. Now the next picture we see Ederson coming in on the left hand side creating a back four which is super clear in this picture Rodri is now the single pivot with Cancelo higher up the field and we'll talk about the dynamics between Cancelo, Bernardo Silva and Gabriel Jesus on this right hand side in just a minute but we see the asymmetry from Arsenal also very clear because of this over shifting and now we can even see the players that these Arsenal defenders will go and press so with Lacazette going forward pressing the defender Odengard using his cover shadow to block Rodri we also have Saka pressing Ake so then the free player then becomes Ruben Diaz through the wide area if they were to progress around the block but we also have the overload between Cancelo and the other 
right-sided attacking midfielder with Cancelo inverting. He creates an overload in this half space higher between the lines, which often created a free player for Manchester City. And if it wasn't for Arsenal's strong spatial control, they probably would have been progressed past more and hurt more from this right-hand side. Now looking at the mid-block, because there is a lot of different tactical adjustments from both teams against Arsenal's mid block with the asymmetry of Saka and Martinelli playing in the wide areas. But we also have the build up from Manchester City, which looked a, a bit different. So now we have the third variation against Arsenal's mid block with Ake going deeper to then create three central defenders. So this was probably the most effective in drawing Arsenal's press out and allowing then Rodri to become the free player. So we have Rodri at the base of an asymmetric diamond with Gabriel Jesus just playing on this right hand side as we see him going wider but then we have this space vacated which then could allow for inverting from Gabriel Jesus or jumping from Jao Cancelo so this asymmetry from Manchester City made it very effective and made them very hard to defend against because of this asymmetric diamond and the spaces vacated that they could potentially move into from multiple areas. So it wasn't one player or one particular space that Manchester City can hurt you from, but it's the multiple options of multiple spaces and multiple players to occupy these spaces that make them so dangerous. Now going forward against Arsenal's low block, we have our three-man back line, Rodri is our single pivot, allowing then the central defenders from Manchester City to get on the ball and dribble through the half space to try pull out Arsenal defenders and create a diamond for their rest defense with Laporte at the base of this shape. We have Kevin De Bruyne playing on the left hand side, so a little bit different from his right handed position. Then we have Bernardo Silva and Gabriel Jesus playing a more central position with Mares on the wing. In the last picture Mares was on the wing I think I mentioned it was Gabriel J Jesus but it was really Mares so just a quick correction there but we have Raheem Sterling on the left hand side so we have a very distinct Manchester City shape against the Arsenal low block in a 4-4-2 so with the clear Arsenal 4-4-2 we'll notice that the two holding midfielders are quite separated horizontally which is due to the security that the two forwards are offer their midfield line because of the use of their cover shadows and the lack of access the ball has to make a vertical pass through the center of the field and arrive at a player's feet. So Arsenal's two forwards block off this option which affords their two holding midfielders to then become a little bit more separated and allow their midfielders to be more narrow to really control the half space and limit players like De Bruyne getting on the ball in these dangerous positions. Now when Arsenal went down to 10 men they first started in a 4-4-1 seeing Shaka playing as the left side central defender just for a few minutes before they could make a change and sub off Odengard and move Shaka back to his natural position after subbing on a central defender. Now Manchester City early on they were then able to then find the solution of numerical advantage against this back four because of the odd man they were able to create in the build-up often through dribbling central defenders past the single forward of Lacazette. They then had five players committed against the defensive line for Arsenal, really looking to create 2v1s in the wide area or exploring the weak side because of inverted runs and pinning of more attacking midfielding midfielder players. Now we see Shaka move back to his more natural position as the left siding holding midfielder playing in a 4-4-1 after the red card occurred and not much change from Manchester City still trying to exploit the man advantage against the back line and we see a very clear diamond build up De Bruyne goes back to the right hand side and we start to see the partnership between him and Cancelo being able to invert and overload this right hand side especially when they had a man advantage so we see these two players working together able to interchange their position and affect the Arsenal opponents allowing them to then be pulled out higher up the field to then create more dangerous space and more advanced positions. Arsenal in their build up went with their back four with their full backs changing their roles in different scenarios. Tomiyasu played a bit deeper and a bit more narrow with Kieran Tierney playing the wider area allowing Martinelli to then invert and get closer to goal. Manchester City matches with a 4-4-2 in their defensive phase with a very aggressive press and oftentimes going very man oriented against the Arsenal team 
trying to win the ball higher up the field and win individual duels. This would often see Arsenal end up building from their goalkeeper, which they often went more direct to then have better control over the game and take less risks from the back. Tomiyasu then playing more narrow, along with Thomas Partey. Shaka playing more as a box-to-box -box midfielder, often coming deeper, allowing Kieran Tierney to then move higher up the field with Martinelli inverting. But we see the clear 4-4-2 and the staggering of their holding midfielders, some jumping, depending on the situations that occur with Arsenal's movement, but Manchester City players playing very aggressive and forcing Arsenal to play long into 1v1 aerial duels. And now the last picture in Arsenal's build-up, we have Tomiyasu playing a bit more narrow and a bit deeper than Kieran Tierney, who's higher up the field, and we start to see the dynamics of Arsenal's midfield. So we have Shaka as the box-to-box, -box, Partey as the single pivot, but now we have Martin Odengard, who's higher up the field, playing as the number 10, creating an asymmetric 3 in midfield, allowing Manchester City's shape to be distorted and allow for these bigger gaps to occur between the lines through the half space. So this is one way Arsenal could have affected and hurt Manchester City a bit more, but Manchester City's well-drilled defensive structure made it very hard. And that's where we're going to cap off the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.